In our today's video, we'll talk about an unusual person. No, he looked like an ordinary man, but many experts consider him the forefather of what we'll discuss later. This man started the era of hacking and social engineering. Its history began not at the peak of modern technology, but when people still used phones with a dialer, and people knew about computers only from TV. However, nothing stopped the guy. For him, it was just another big and exciting adventure, and not a violation of the law. After all, 30 years ago, Hacking wasn't considered a crime, but quite the contrary. It was encouraged because it was believed that young people only developed their intelligence. What could be wrong with that? Let's see. Kevin Mitnick was born in the USA in 1963. He grew up with a mother without a father because he left the family when the boy was very young. So his mother had to work most of the time. Kevin was just an average boy and didn't draw attention to himself in any way. But by the age of 12, he had an unusual hobby. And when all the boys of his age liked to play ball, Kevin preferred to ride the buses. He liked to ride and look at the city from the window. However, he had little money at that time, so the boy had to save change for a ticket. On his next trip, he was looking at his ticket, and at that moment, he came up with an idea of how to bypass the system and save money on travel. He realized that the check relies on an unusual puncture pattern that the driver makes. This scheme depends on the day, time, and route itself. However, in order to make his plan a reality, the boy needed a new hole punch and tickets. And if it was possible to use and use tickets from the ballot box, then there was a problem with hole punches, and the boy decided to ask the driver where could he buy such a device. The man, unaware of anything, gave Kevin all the information, and after a couple of days, the boy's first trick went successful, and then he almost rode for free. Kevin considered himself a genius for a long time until he signed up for a school radio club where he befriended a boy and whom he told the trick with tickets. He only replied that he has a lot to learn. The guy, meanwhile, showed Kevin how to work with phone systems that he could do anything with. As it turned out later, Kevin's new friend was self-taught and in his young age, he mastered such a phenomenon as freaking, the method of hacking the telephone network. When there still were telephone lines, many such methods have been created. The main purpose of this hack was to make free long-distance and international phone calls. He showed Kevin how to make both international and long-distance calls completely free. A little later, he introduced Kevin to other freakers, who became an example for him. Interesting fact. The creators of Apple were also famous freakers in their time. Kevin listened and watched as his new acquaintances used little tricks, slang words, to call the phone companies. Sometime later, Kevin also performed his trick with a teacher of computer courses, which at that time were only available to school graduates. And since the boy was still too young, they didn't accept him. But Kevin was too stubborn to just give up with his voice and tone dial. After learning all the information about the teacher, he came to him and the teacher learning about the abilities of the guy took him as a student regardless of his age. I think that the teacher regretted that he began to teach me if he knew what it would all lead to, Kevin himself said many years later. Meanwhile, the boy kept improving his skills. By the age of 14, the guy learned to redirect the home phone signal to the payphone, having fun with the fact that before the conversation, each caller was asked to load 10 cents. By the age of 15, phones didn't pose much of a problem for him. However, soon he was completely tired of this entertainment, so he began all the time in the computer class studying manuals. And in 1980, Kevin managed to make his first hacking of the school's local network. He had a lot of options open to him. He could correct his grades, but he didn't do it because he was only interested in the hacking process. At the age of 16, the phone companies tore the telephone wire out of Kevin's apartment. They were angry with the fact that the guy managed to hack their system. They did this only because at that time, there were no legal ways to influence the hacker. But Kevin wasn't taken aback. At the time, he lived with his mother in Building 13. And after that incident, he went to a hardware store and bought a new number and letter. In such a clever way, literally changing his address he managed to sign a new contract. He managed to sign a new contract with a phone company. In 1979, Kevin managed to get his first serious assignment, after which he could rightfully consider himself.
a real hacker. In the same year, he met a group of hackers who invited the guy to join their team. In order to be accepted into their community, Kevin had to pass a test that would show his capabilities and abilities. The task was to hack Digital Equipment Corporation company system. The security system of the company was the strongest, and they didn't think that it could be hacked. Kevin was able to easily complete the task in five minutes. From that moment on, Kevin became popular among hackers, but he was only interested in telephony. He learned everything on his own. Although he was studying at the time in college in Los Angeles and at the University of Southern California. After a while, troubles happened in Kevin's life. Soon, he and the group of hackers were handed over to the police by one of the hacker group mate's girlfriend. Kevin was charged and sentenced to three months in a juvenile facility and a year on probation. But he didn't waste time in prison, and by the time he was released, he knew everything about telephone lines. Kevin became a master of phone hacking. He could easily call from someone else's number, listen to other people's conversations, and even create new phone numbers. Over the years, the guy studied new things and improved his abilities. When he moved to California, he did all sorts of phone and computer jokes, skillfully covering up the traces of his actions. He was able to evade responsibility for a long time until 1987, when he was turned over to the police by his friend and fellow hacker. He did it out of envy because no one could get to Kevin's level. He was again given a term in prison, which wasn't the last. After the latest hack, Mitnick seemed to have calmed down. But wanting to find out what else he was capable of, Kevin continued his game. The chief of police for computer crimes said at the trial, Mitnick is several times more skillful than other average hackers. And in 1990, Kevin was released on probation. The main condition for his release was a ban on using a computer, but Mitnick soon joked again. Blocking the number of his supervisor, the judge's credit account was in chaos and all information about his arrest and sentence disappeared from the main computer of the court. And in 1992, Kevin managed to escape from the FBI, who carefully monitored all his actions. All this time, when they were looking for him all over the country, he was holed up in California, where he connected to the state's telephone system. He bugged the FBI and was one step ahead of them each time. In 1994, authorities suspected him of stealing system security for Motorola. And miscommunications claimed that someone had stolen the serial numbers of their cell phones. But what Kevin is really capable of, he showed on the night of December 25 when he hacked the computer of Chitomo Shimomura, who was a leading American computer security specialist. After this incident, catching Mitnick was a matter of honor for Shimomura because the hacking undermined his impeccable reputation as the best computer security specialist in the world. In February 1995, Mitnick was arrested and many even claimed that he surrendered voluntarily because he was always one step ahead and it was impossible to catch him. He was charged with 23 charges for his fraud as well as causing great damage, an amount that exceeded more than $80 million. He became a legend in the narrow circle of the United States. The New York Times colorfully described the story of his machinations in Los Angeles, Mitnick managed to reprogram the phone network so that after tracking his call, FBI agents went not to his lair, but to an immigrant from the Middle East. In total, Kevin was imprisoned for about five years. The judge was convicted that if you give Mitnick a phone in the court, he will easily get through to the Air and Space Defense Command and launch an intercontinental missile with a whistle through his phone. This image was attached to him just because he seemed to do everything for fun, not for profit, because he stole absolutely nothing. Although in a couple of minutes, he could transfer hundreds of millions of dollars to his account. However, even on the run, he was a modest, unremarkable citizen and went to a regular job. During the years when Mitnick was in prison, many books were written about him. After Mitnick's sentencing, Shimamura published the book Hacking, in which he reasoned that at that time, Kevin had no equal. In 2000, Kevin was released, and since then, he has never returned to his hacking activities. 
And since 2003, the authorities have officially allowed him to use the phone and social networks. And since 2010, he earns money by working on computer system protection issues. He also owns a computer and social security company that advises the CIA, FBI, and the police. For example, in the state of Michigan, appeared a telephone terrorist who called the local school with threats about mining. For a long time, he couldn't be found until John Keck asked for help in the World Wide Web and Kevin Mitnick responded to his request. And soon, that hooligan was found and arrested and Mitnick was thanked. The popularity of Kevin Mitnick is so high that the father sells some of his son's thing through online auctions where they cost a lot of money. During his life, the man wrote several books that are dedicated to information security. In an interview, he said that his main goal wasn't to get rich or become popular, but to identify weaknesses in the system and help eliminate them. And this is true. Because after his numerous hacks, programmers were able to identify their weaknesses and prevent penetration into the system. With his attempts, he literally pointed out all the shortcomings and did it completely for free. But if it was someone else, who knows how it would turn out like? How do you like the story of a man who managed to turn the whole world of computer security upside down? Did you like the story about this amazing man named Kevin Mitnick? Write your opinion in the comments and like the video. That's it for today. See you soon!